Hi everybody, welcome to GT Coding. In this tutorial series, we are designing the Apple navigation menu. Now we have already designed the desktop version and we are almost done with the mobile version. In this video, we're going to add some JavaScript to make all the buttons work. And before that, we will add and remove some CSS classes and see whether everything is working all right. And after that, we will move to the JavaScript and add some image listeners and make everything work. So let's get started. Now the first thing I noticed over here is that when you hover over this, uh, we have a different color in the Apple website. So let's go to the apple.com website and we can see when we hover over this, we have a different color. So let's do that. So let's go to style.css and uh, let's see where is the quick links. So these are all the quick links. So here let's add mobile search container, quick links, ULLIA colon hover and we'll set the color of the text to 299FF and right now we can see we have the color and there's one more thing we need to fix so when we open the desktop version we can see that the mobile search container is being displayed over here everything else is working all right so we have to remove that from the desktop version so let's go over here outside the media query and here we can see we have hidden items and we have already hidden the mobile nav let's add a comma and I'll just type mobile search container and now we can see that it is hidden. Now the first thing we will do is hide this cancel button by default. So if you go back to the Apple website, this is the default view of the search input field. And when we click on this, we have the cancel button displayed. So let's go ahead and set a width of zero by default for the cancel button. So here we can see this is the mobile search container. And in that we have the cancel button over here. Now when we click on the search input field, we're gonna add the active class. So when we have the active class, we're going to display the cancel button. And if you don't have the active class, we're going to remove the cancel button from here. So let's remove the active class from here. Now here we can still see the cancel button. So let's go back to style.css and uh, let's go to the styles for the cancel. So here we can see these are the styles for the cancel button. So here we will add a width of zero pixels and uh, let's set the overflow to hidden and we can still see the cancel button over here a little bit so we have to remove the padding from here as well so let's remove the padding from here and we will add it to the active class so here we will type mobile search container search bar dot active so when we have the active class in the search bar we're going to display the cancel button so let's type cancel button and we'll paste the padding over here and we'll also set the width to some set value so I just calculated and 74 pixels seems to be the right width. So let's go back over here to HTML and uh, let's add the active class. And it is not being displayed. So let's go back to the CSS. And uh, here we have to add a plus. So here we have to type plus and now the cancel button is being displayed. Now the reason we have to add plus over here is because both these elements that is the search bar and the cancel button are siblings so they are under the same parent so we cannot add search bar active and uh, dot cancel button it will mean that the cancel button is inside the search bar but since both the elements are one next to the other we have to add a plus over here so this is how the selector in the css works so let's go ahead and remove the active class and the cancel button is not being displayed and when we add the active class it is being displayed now the next thing we need to do is we want to display these quick links only if we have the active class inside the search bar. So here we can see in the Apple website the quick links are not displayed by default. When we click on the search input field we have the quick links displayed over here. So let's go back to the CSS and uh, let's go to quick links and this is the CSS for the quick links. So let's go over here and let's type mobile search container search bar dot active and if you go back to the HTML we can see that we have the search bar over here and then we have the cancel button and then we have the quick links so both these elements are not one next to the other we have an element in between so for that we have to use the tilde symbol in your keyboard so it is right next to the number one on your keyboard and then you have to type the element so let's type quick links now when we don't have the active class, we have to set the opacity to zero. So let's set opacity zero over here in the selector without the active class. And we'll also set the pointer events to none so that no one can click on any of the links and 
if you go back to the Apple website, we can see that when you click on this uh, input field, the quick links are fading down. So initially we have to set it a little above the normal position. So let's set the top position to 10 pixels and we will remove this top from here, top 80 pixels and we will add it to the active class and we will also set the opacity to 1 when we have the active class and we will also set the pointer events to auto. Alright, now let's remove the active class from the search bar and now we can see that the cancel button and the quick links are not being displayed. Alright, now let's scroll up and uh, here for the desktop now we have added a class called move down so let's remove it from here and now we can see that the links are being displayed and let's also remove the move up class from here for the nav right now we can see that this is how the menu will look when you first click on the menu icon so this is the apple website and let's click on the menu icon and this is how the menu looks at the beginning we can see that everything looks all right we just have to change this icon to the cross icon so let's go back to style.css and uh, let's scroll up to the CSS of the icon so here we can see this is where we are adding the CSS now here we have styled it in a way where we are gonna add the active class to the menu icon container so this is the menu icon container and if we add the active class over here we can see that it has the cross icon now let's just remove this from here and we will make it work with the active class inside the nav container. So when we click on this icon, we are going to add the active class to the nav container. So this element right here. So let's do that. So let's remove the active from here and also from here. And here we will type nav container dot active nav. So here we can see we have nav container and in that we have the active class. We'll also do that over here. So let's type nav container dot active. All right, now let's go back to the HTML and let's remove the active class from the nav container. And now we can see that we have the other icon. And when we add the active class, we have the menu items displayed over here. And also we have this close icon over here. Now let's remove the active class from here. And we still have this search form displayed over here. Now we have to remove that when we don't have the active class. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it 90 degrees so that it cannot be seen. So here in the Apple website we can see that it seems like it is being rotated. So we're going to do that. So let's go over here to style.css and let's go to the styles for the mobile search container. So here we have it. So here by default we will set the transform rotate x to 90 degrees. Now we can see that the search container is not being displayed and let's also add the active class so let's type nav container dot active mobile search container and here we will type transform rotate x zero degrees all right now let's add the active class over here and now we can see that the search form is being displayed and when we remove the active class it is hidden Right now for the last time let's see what are the classes we need to add for all of these elements to work. So first of all when we click on this uh, menu icon we want to add the active class to the nav container. So this is how it's gonna look if you go back to the Apple website. When we click on the menu icon we have this displayed over here. It is pretty similar in our website as well. I think we need to hide this bag icon when we have the active class. So here we have the bag icon but when we click on this menu icon we don't have it. So let's add some styles for that as well. So let's go back to style.css. So let's go over here and add a comment. We'll just type bag icon animation and here we'll just type nav container dot active and uh, if you go back to the HTML we can see we have this uh, anchor tag with the class of link bag. So let's target that. We'll just type mobile nav link bag and we will set the transform to translate y to 8 pixels so we will move it down a little bit and also set the opacity to 0 and we'll also set the pointer events to none right now let's remove the active class and here the bag icon is being displayed but if we add the active class it is not being displayed so everything is working all right till here now let's add the move up class to the nav so when we click on this 
we need to move the nav up and we also need to display these quick links and we need to move the menu items down and uh, hide it. So we have already created classes for that in the previous video. So let's add that over here. So I'll just type class move up. So here we can see it has moved up and uh, we also have to set the class move down for the desktop nav. So here we'll just type move down and then we also have to add the active class to the search bar inside the mobile search container. So here we'll just type active and we have the quick links displayed over here. So everything is working all right. Now we just need to add and remove these classes using JavaScript. So let's remove all of these classes. So we have this move down class. Let's remove that. And also the move up and also the active class. All right, now let's add and remove those classes using JavaScript. So we need to reference a couple of elements from the HTML. We need to reference the nav container because we want to add and remove the active class. And we also need to reference the menu icon container because uh, when we click on the menu icon container, we want to add the active class to the nav container. So let's reference both of these elements from here. So let's go to main.js. Let's add a comment. We'll just type mobile version. And here we'll just type const menu icon container. And we'll set it to document dot query selector nav menu icon container. And we also need to access the nav container. So let's type const nav container equals document dot query selector nav container. All right now let's add an event listener to the menu icon container. So let's type menu icon container dot add event listener. And we will add the click event. And let's create an arrow function over here. And we need to add the active class to the nav container. So let's type nav container dot class list dot toggle active. So the first time we click on the menu icon container, we will add the active class. And when we click on it once again, it will remove the active class. So let's test it out. Let's click on this menu icon container. And we have the active class to the nav container. And let's click on it once again. And the class is being removed. So everything is working all right. Now if you right click over here and go to inspect and let's open the responsive version and now if you click on this icon we can see that there is some background displayed over here of blue color. Now we will add one line of CSS to remove that. So let's go to style CSS and let's go to the end and we'll just target some elements. So I'll just type input div span and anchor tag and we have to type webkit tab highlight color and we have to set it to RGBA 0, 0, 0 and 0. Right now when we click on this, we don't have the background color. Right, let's add some more event listeners. So when we click on this input field, we want to add the active class to the search bar and also move up class to the nav and also the move down class to the desktop nav. So let's reference all these elements from the HTML. So we need to basically reference the desktop nav and the search bar and also the nav. So let's go back to our JavaScript file and uh, let's type const search bar. We'll type document dot query selector and here we'll type mobile search container search bar. And now let's reference the nav. So let's type const nav equals document dot query selector nav container nav. And we also need to reference the input field. So if you scroll down, here we can see we have this input field. When we click on this, we need to add the active class. So let's go back to our JavaScript file and let's type const search input and we'll type document dot query selector mobile search container input. And the last thing we need to reference is the desktop nav, but we have already referenced it over here. So here we can see we have already referenced it. So we can use this constant. Now let's add an event listener to the search input. So let's type search input dot add event listener. So let's add the click event over here and uh, let's create an arrow function. And when we click on the search input field, we need to add the active class to the search bar. So let's type search bar dot class list dot add active. And we need to add the move up class to the nav. So let's type nav dot class list dot add move up and we also need to add the move down class to the desktop nav. So let's type desktop nav class list dot add move down. 
and when we click on the cancel button we need to remove all these classes so we also have to reference the cancel button so here's the cancel button with the class of cancel btn so let's reference that so here i'll just type const cancel btn equals document dot query selector and we'll type mobile search container cancel btn and let's just copy this and paste it down here and we'll just replace this with cancel button and we'll just replace all the add with remove right now let's go ahead and test it out so let's click on the menu icon and uh, we have the active class for the nav container and let's click on the search input field and we have the quick links displayed over here and also the cancel button and when we click on the cancel button we are taken back to this screen over here so everything is working all right now the last thing we need to do is add the animation so we will do that in the next video and that will probably be the last video in our series so that's basically it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day